So welcome everybody. The CompuWorks community looks like it's showing up big time again for, for this session as uh, you guys have for the first two. Um, I guess we must be getting something right with the topic. So that's great. And, um, you know, as I think we've mentioned in, in prior sessions, if, if you've attended those, uh, we're certainly looking uh, for your input on those. At the end of the session, we'll be giving you some feedback and an email address in terms of how you can, you know, communicate with us if you have some suggestions and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> we will also be recording this session. So if you have colleagues that aren't able to attend the entire session, um, you'll be able to share that with them. Uh, it seems like we're going to have a pretty tight schedule here. We've got a lot to cover in an hour, so we may uh, kick some of the questions down to, you know, post session. So if you're unable to stay for all of those, you will be able to see those on the recording that we'll send out. Um, so if you have a question during today's session, use the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom screen to bring up that dialog box. Um, and let's see, is there anything else I need to cover? Oh, yeah, I think the, the next thing I need to cover is our next session. So if you could move that slide forward one, Kate, that would be great. Or, oh, that's me, so nobody wants to see that. Okay, <laughs> so here, here's the... Uh, Here's the next session. Um, so we, the first session we did in June was a team session and it was a, a huge turnout for us. Lots of reasons that people are interested in teams that we all understand. Um, we're looking to take this a little bit beyond the basics. So, you know, think of this as Teams 201 or, you know, we maybe we did Teams 101. So this is some topics that, you know, we didn't have a chance to cover in that first session. So if you are interested in Teams, if this is something that you're finding that you're living and breathing every day, this is going to be a great session for you. Um, and and we'll, we'll be including a link for you to register in the follow-up email that we send out tomorrow that's going to include the survey and the recording. So uh, we encourage you to, to sign up for that. Uh, and with that, and without further ado, I'm going to introduce our presenter today, and we're very happy to have Kate Dauphiny with us uh, on this call. She's a very experienced trainer. She's been training people throughout her career, uh, including the past 15 years of doing technical training, including in designing and delivery enterprise-wide software training, custom corporate programs, and specialty courses. She focuses on SharePoint and the Microsoft Suite. And she's currently working on a certification in Teams and Information Protection. And we're very happy to have you here, Kate. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. So shall we get started then? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, great. So I'm Kate. There we go. And today's agenda. So we're going to spend a very short time on security and authentication just because it's important and we're working in the cloud and people are always concerned about security in the cloud. Uh, we're also going to look at what's included in Microsoft Office 365, which is uh, it's an, ex it's an extensive array of products. We're going to look at briefly at the launch pads to give you access to all these different wonderful products. And then we're going to show you some live demonstrations. This is a very fun presentation because there's so much available to see. So Microsoft is built on this, they call it a hyperscale enterprise grade cloud. It's called Azure. And the one thing that Microsoft has been concerned about right from the get go, because of the concern that people has, it have is security. So you can rest assured that they have uh, absolutely fantastic security and it's improving all the time. They're always working on ways to upgrade the security and pr information protection on uh, documents that are shared in the cloud. Um, the certi certification that I'm actually about to embark on or I'm, I'm in the middle of, the information protection is very, very new. So they're just um, really starting to ramp up their, um, their certifications and the, the a general awareness of how important security is to them. So um, there are numerous security enhancements available that you should look at implementing. And one of the most important ones is multi-factor authentication. And if you haven't heard this term, you should write it down and underline it because it's pretty important. But a lot of people will have already used multi-factor authentication because we have our usually have our cell phones right at our sides. And very often when you're logging into a site, they will send you a text and give you a number to enter. So you're probably familiar a little bit with multi-factor or two-factor authentication already anyway. And then of course there's conditional access and single sign-on. And what that means is that when you're using these tools, your data is encrypted both 
in transit and at rest. And so those are two differentiations that uh, they use in the security business. It doesn't really mean a lot to us, but it just means that your documents are encrypted when they're on their way somewhere or when they're actually sitting in your system. And so if it happened to be intercepted, it would be garbly, garbage anyway. It wouldn't be readable to anybody. So let's take a look at the array of tools. So this is uh, pretty much a list of everything that is available in Microsoft 365. And so we're going to take a look at a few of these. Clearly there's some that are very complicated and administrative oriented, so we won't be covering those. But um, so we won't be looking at Word or Excel. Outlook is a program you're pretty familiar with. We're gonna look at one of the features of Outlook that might be useful to you. And then of course we won't look at PowerPoint. And then there's the additional services and apps. And there's a whole bunch of them that are called what we call legacy. And so those legacy applications, Access, Publisher, Skype, and Skype for Business, they're evolving to the point where they may not be available in the same context as they are now. So they're considered legacy applications. Then there are a whole bunch of management, AI, and security tools that are way too complicated and probably not of any use to a regular user anyway. Um, and the rest of them are ones that we're going to either look at or we're going to just cover briefly today. Like, for example, bookings. This is a really uh, neat integration where you can allow your clients to book right through your Outlook calendar. So you might be using something like Calendly or there are a number of third party applications that you can use for bookings. But this is one that's built right into Microsoft 365. It works really neatly and you can use that. So that's bookings. Then there's um, Microsoft Editor. Uh, where is that one? He's here. Now, Microsoft Editor <clears throat> is, it's a lot like that program you see advertised in social media where it's like um, uh, Grammarly, it's called, and it's supposed to help you write better. Well, this is pretty much the same type of program. You'll see it in Word. It'll help you um, with your grammar and your spelling. And this extends that program through all your programs and <clears throat> including on the web. So you can add it as an extension to Edge or Google Chrome, and you can edit your, your stuff right there on the website. So that's um, editor. Then we have Mile IQ. Mile IQ is a mile tracker for tracking travel expenses. So if you're paying for something, you don't need to anymore. You can just use this one that's built in. Then we have My Analytics. My Analytics, you may have even seen that in your inbox in the morning. It's a tool that uh, gives an assessment of how productive you are and um, offers tips and other insights. I personally haven't found it all that useful, but um, I think if you're working um, in an intense scenario where you wanna manage your time and you wanna see where you're spending your time, this might be a really good productivity tool for you. Then of course we have um, Project. Now Project, is uh, really powerful and basically it's a um, world-class um, project management tool that is used widely and I encourage you to take a look at it. Of course, it's another two hour seminar to show it to you. So we won't be looking at that today. Then we have Sway. Now Sway is kind of like an upgraded version of PowerPoint. It's online and uh, it's kind of next generation. I did a little playing with it. I, I didn't really get the hang of it, but I talked to a colleague who said that he and his nine-year-old son had a great time with it and his nine-year-old son figured it out really quickly and easily. So considering that a lot of us have the, um, the, you know, the technical adeptness of a nine-year-old because let's face it, nine-year-olds these days are pretty savvy, um, maybe Sway is something that you wanna try using. Anyway, also then next we have Visio. And Visio is um, a great tool. It's been around for decades. It's been a kind of a process flow diagram type of tool, but you can build org charts and all manner of different kinds of, of uh, neat process flow types of things. It's a, it's a really handy tool. Now, I'm not sure that every license actually has Visio in it, so you'll want to check about that. Now, then we have Windows. Now, Windows seems like a strange thing to have in your Microsoft 365 array, but things are changing now with licensing plans. And it may come down to the fact that you don't even need to purchase as many Windows licenses as you did previously because it's incorporated into the Microsoft 365 suite. Um, Yammer is uh, like a social media type of program. It's, it's kind of like a Twitter. It's used in a lot of large enterprises, very large enterprises and governments. But for smaller, enter for smaller organizations, 
Teams tends to be as useful as anything that you could use and is typically the go-to tool for internal communication. <clears throat> and then mobile apps. Well, mobile apps, this is kind of the power these days of cloud tools. Everything that you can use in Microsoft 365 is pretty much available to your mobile app. So you have a, I use an iOS Apple device and I can download all of these tools. It's it's actually pretty amazing. You can actually look at an Excel diagram on your phone. It's pretty small, but you can, you know, you can always expand it. So it, it works really well. And then of course, we'll talk a little bit about Edge. Edge is the new Microsoft browser. Now it's not that new. There was an Edge for a long time there with their search engine called Bing. I was never very impressed with it because it didn't seem to work very well. But recently they flicked a switch. I'm not sure what they did, but it's built on Chromium technology and that may have been the, the, the thing that changed it. And all of a sudden now it's a great tool and it's something that I'm using all the time. It's got some new features in it that are just really, really nice features. And we'll, we'll take a look at that briefly just to show you some of those very nice features. <clears throat> so let's take a look at some of the launch pads. <clears throat> So the foundations of Microsoft 365 are Azure AD, which is the cloud part, the, and it manages your security. There's also Exchange, which manages your email, your calendar, and more. And then there's SharePoint. And SharePoint is where most of your company data is stored. So there's a web interface, and that's how users access your SharePoint data. So then you also have OneDrive. And so every user in Microsoft 365 has a OneDrive. It's a one terabyte drive that's used for storing your individual documents, things you're working on that you don't necessarily want to share widely. You can still share things from your OneDrive, though. It's, it's, a, it's a great tool. And then you have Teams. Well, Teams is a chat-centered communications hub, which apparently many of you are already using. And so you know how useful it can be. Um, the files in there are actually the same files that you use in either SharePoint or your OneDrive, and it's just a different way of viewing those files. So when you save a copy of your files in a chat, in a Teams chat, that file actually goes into your OneDrive. And then when you share a document in um, your channels, in your, in your Teams channels, that document goes into SharePoint. So you've got the use of OneDrive and SharePoint in the background of your teams all the time. So Outlook, of course, remains your email communications hub and is a launch pad for your calendar and several other tools, one of which we're going to look at today. And then, of course, the Edge Hub. And the Edge Hub is really the ultimate launch, launch pad, and um, it's one of the features that I just love about Edge. So we're going to take a quick look at that. And actually, I'll be using that to some extent today. Now, when, you, when it comes to files, sometimes people are understandably concerned about this new way of looking at files and looking at them from online. And they're used to the old fashioned file explorer where they wanna just be able to see their files in this good old fashioned way. So actually you can look at your files from file explorer just the same way as you always did. And these are the files that are based in your, in your SharePoint and your OneDrive. So here we have, my personal OneDrive, my OneDrive through our demo experience, and then this little two buildings icon, it represents SharePoint. So this will be the documents that are available in your channels. And then of course your OneDrive is documents that are available through your chat. So let's take a look at some of these tools. We're gonna to take a look at Outlook To Do, and then we're gonna use a combination of both Teams and Edge to look at Stream, Whiteboard, OneNote, planner or tasks as it's sometimes known, forms and lists. And then we're gonna take a look at SharePoint and just a quick uh, and dirty around uh, what sharing files and pages and lists look like. So let's dive in. So I'm gonna show you now, um, this is Edge. So welcome to Edge. And um, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on Edge right this minute, but I do wanna show you um, how there's just some really great tools. So you can see this lovely picture and you actually have, you can actually personalize it. So you can pick a different theme. I like to have it on Office 365. And let's just see here. I like to have an Office 365. And you can also have just headings only. So you can just see headings when you, 
when you scroll up. Then you've got these shortcuts here and you can actually hide those if you want to. Um, I want to show you here, this is the editor that we talked about a little while ago. This is the plugin for the extension for this browser. And this is where you can actually check your spelling and your grammar right here in the browser. And then we have something called collections. So now, you know, we're typically accustomed to our favorites across the top, and those tend to be kind of more stable. We use them all the time. They're, they're more permanent. But here we have something called collections. And collections are a really great tool because now you can start a collection and then you can just add pages as you want to save them for later. So I have a reading channel here and I have a couple of documents that I want to look at later on. And then when I'm finished with them, I can just delete them from this collection. So I also have a collection in another browser that is um, my Microsoft certification. So all of the training is based in the web and it can get pretty confusing with all the different uh, pages and so on. So I keep them in collections to keep them organized. It's just a really great tool. Now, this is the true launch pad of the browser. This is where we actually launch our apps. So you can see all the apps here. And then if I click here, I have all the apps and we can scroll down to see everything that's available to you. So this is, I use this a lot. I'm, I'm really, this is the part of the, the browser that I like most, and I, I certainly I use it every day, all the time. So I just want to uh, just see if there's any questions. None so far, it looks like, Alan. Great. Don't see any yet. Let's look at Outlook to do. So I'm going to just show you Outlook on the browser here, and you'll see that it's very similar to your Outlook on your desktop. There are a few more features in your desktop application, but for the most part, apart from the fact that now the, the uh, tools are lined up on the left as opposed to down on the bottom, so you've got your calendar, your people, your attachments, and your to-dos, but today we're going to look at to-do. So I'm going to click that little check mark, and it's going to open up my day. And so here I can add tasks. So I'm going to add a task here, write TPS report, and I'm going to enter that. I'm just going to click enter and that adds that to the, and then when I click on that task, you can see it brings up a different uh, menu of things. So I can add some steps here. So if I want to break that down, I can add some steps. So I can say, get input from Michael. I can add that and then I can just submit to Bill. And so now I have different steps associated with that task. I can mark it as important right here. And I can see also I can add a due date. So I might want to add a due date for next week. And I can put a reminder in here also. I can put a reminder in here that I'm going to start it tomorrow at nine, or I can actually customize that as well. Now, over here, I wanted to just show you, you can see the important ones that are marked with a star, planned ones, and then assigned to me. And this, these planned and assigned to me come from the planner app. And so we're going to see how all of these are incredibly integrated into uh, these, all the different Microsoft tools. So I'm going to just go back to Outlook for a minute. Just going to show you in Outlook. There's a little tool right up here on the upper right hand side. This is the same tool as we saw in. And it's my day. It just opens up a panel on the, on the right hand side and it shows your calendar and all your appointments. And then it shows your to do. So here are the tasks that I have and I can even take a, a closer look at them. I wonder if I can actually, I can mark it as completed here. So that gives you a, a quick way to look at your day. Now I'm gonna look at Teams right here in the browser and I'm gonna show you how the browser interface is very nearly identical to your desktop, except that it has this wonderful little launcher here. I actually prefer to use Teams in the browser because I like having that launcher right there. I like to get to my SharePoint or I like to get to my files or whatever. So I actually really like having that. But you'll notice here we have a robust, I'm sorry about that. Um, we have a robust uh, search bar here. And then over here at the top, we have a settings menu and of course my profile. But what I really wanna just focus on today is just a couple of quick things. The activity where you get all your notifications, chat, where you'll have your one-on-one -on -one chats with colleagues or possibly in small groups. And another thing, I'm not sure if you're aware, but you can chat with people who are outside your organization as well, which is a really nice feature. 
And then you'll spend lots of time in the actual Teams. And of course, you've got your calendar and files. Not everybody has calls. That's an integrated program. And so we don't cover it in any of our introductory um, material because it just isn't relevant to most organizations. But you can see here team. So any team is the item that has the tile next to it. And so we have health and safety, research and development, smart orcas. And this is where you can see um, there's, this is where the people are. So I like to think of the team as the people. And then um, these are the channels underneath. And to me, this is where the work is done. So these channels are very often dedicated to specific pieces of work that you might be doing. So we'll spend a bit of time here today in the health and safety meeting minutes because we have quite a few relevant things to that particular channel. So I also wanted to show you though, I do have Teams open over here. This is the desktop version. And so you can see up here, there's a nice back button, but otherwise it's very, very similar. So I'm gonna stick pretty much in the browser today because I just like working in the browser. Okay, so let's look at stream. So stream is a lot like YouTube, except that it's inside your own organization, but you can set it up a lot like YouTube. So for example, you can upload a video, you can actually record right in this, the, um, the application. You can record your screen if you wanna show somebody how to do um, a, some sort of a screen related um, program, or you can record a video from here. You can also create groups and channels. So you can set it up very much like the, um, the YouTube that we're all so familiar with. Now I'm gonna go down here and I'm just gonna start this video. I'm not gonna run it for the rest of the time though. But what I wanna show you down here is that there are comments. So again, it's very much like your own internal YouTube. You can like it, you can add it to a watch list and you can also share it. So here you can, you have a link that you can copy and send that in a chat or in an email and give somebody access to that video. So now we're gonna take a look at whiteboard. So I wanna go back into, I told you earlier, we were gonna spend quite a bit of time in health and safety meeting minutes. And so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tab to this channel. I'm not sure if you're familiar with adding a tab to the channel, but this is one of the great powers of the Teams app. So I'm gonna add a channel here for the whiteboard. You see right here, the whiteboard. And rather than call it whiteboard, I think what I'm gonna do is call it safety ideas. I'll save that. It's taking a little longer to open today than it did this morning. At any rate, so here I'm gonna open up a text box and I'm going to type, um, ideas for improving safety. And I can extend that to make it like a title. And then I can also put a little note in here. I can add a sticky note. And so here I have a sticky note. And if I wanna move that sticky note, I just click here to move that sticky note. And here on that sticky note, I'm gonna go edit and I'll add um, remove boxes from boxes by regular spelling of boxes from the back room. So then you'll see now here I have a pen, I can circle this, I could circle the whole thing if I wanted to. Well, that's kind of bad. So I think I'll just delete it. But then if I click the hand, I can move all of this around. I can also back up and make it smaller and move it over here. And then I can start a new sticky on this side. I'll do it a different color. And I have a different one here that I can just once again, add hello. So lots of different ways that you can use this uh, for people sharing it. You can just have it there. Your team can come in and add something to the whiteboard at any given time. Now, what I wanna show you though, is I'm gonna open up the whiteboard as an app on the browser. And you'll see here, there is the whiteboard that I added. So when I click on that, you'll see there is the 
the whiteboard that I just used a minute ago. So, and I can also, I can share this if we look at it in meeting minutes. <clears throat> I can share it. Where does it say share? Come on. It must be share here. Open an app. You see here, you can actually go and open it in the browser app. And I even have chats around it. Well, I'm very sorry. I can't seem to find the share function. There we Microsoft's go. Microsoft's pretty good at hiding things. And they are good at hiding things. I had a heck of a time finding something earlier today too. Anyway, there's the little person people and that's where you can share it. So you can share the link. If you wanna share the link, you can just copy the link and send that in a chat or uh, an email. Anyway, thanks, Alan. <laughs> so anyway, let's move on to OneNote. And once again, I'm gonna go back to meeting minutes here and I'm gonna create a new tab once again, and I'm gonna click OneNote. And here we have default notebooks already set up. So I'm gonna click on this default notebook. I guess I have to click save, I can't go enter. And here we have a blank notebook. So this little library thing gives me the way to see what we have going on. And we have no sections right now. So I'm gonna click this to create a new section called safety training. And then you'll see there's the section, but I have a titled page. So each section can have any number of pages and you can have any number of sections and you can also, there's a menu here, you can rename a section, you can delete it, you can change the color of it, you can add a page and so on. So there's lots of options here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a name of a page, training links, and then I'm gonna put here is a list of, of pardon me, online resources. And then I can go link one, link two. And you see here, we've got lots of options to, to format the material. I can bold it. There's lots of different ways. And then again, if I open this up, I can see how this works. So I have safety training and training links. <clears throat> so now I'm just gonna go up here again. And I'm gonna open up OneNote. And once again, I go to the default notebook. And you can see here, there is the notebook. And really it's, it's exactly the same interface. So you can add information here and it will show up in the notebook that we, we created in the channel. You can also share these. There's the share button right there over on the right-hand side. And I have a feeling if you are watching the recording, you may see the pictures of Alan and I over the top of the share button. But if you look at your own app, you'll see that share button is up in the upper right-hand corner. And this is where you can email somebody with a message or you can get a link to share that notebook. That's a great feature. Okay, let's take a look at Planner. So I'm gonna load Planner in Edge and get rid of some of these. <clears throat> and I'm gonna open up Planner. Now, we already have a few tasks ranged in Planner. And so I'm gonna click on that to see what we've got going on here. We have four nice tasks to do, and then we have buckets. Now, what are buckets for? So you've got a list of tasks, but you may wanna organize your tasks according to a specific type of work or departments or dates or whatever. You can arrange them any way you want. So here I'm gonna add a bucket called workplace safety improvements. And then I can move, like this is pretty easy. I can just move them over, move them back, move them over, move them back. You can see in a task, you can change the color of the label. If you want, you can assign it. And again, when we talked about assign earlier, we saw in to do tasks that were assigned to us will show up in the to do or the my day where you have tasks you have to do. So you can copy, link to tasks, and of course, remove them. And then you can check them off to see they're done. You can also change the date right here. 
So there's lots that you can do with this. It's um, something that people, it's like a narrow, it's like a kind of a really simplified project management tool. A lot of people use it for small projects where um, you don't need the, uh, the robustness of the project um, plan uh, application to manage your project. So now if I open it up in Teams, I'm going to create an, yet another tab. I'm going to, and in this tab, it's called Tasks by Planner, but it is the same. And here we can say, use an existing plan, which is what I'm going to do. And it'll give me health and safety tasks. And that'll open up the health and safety tasks. And so really, this is the very same interface as we saw in Planner a minute ago. And the only difference is that you don't have the other plans lined up on the left-hand side. So it is right embedded in Teams, whereas with the, the, the web-based app, you have your different plans lined up on the left-hand side. So now let's take a look at forms. So I'm going to create a form here. Where's my forms? There we go. I'm going to create, now this is a lot like a survey monkey form. So you can send out a survey. I see it as um, an opportunity to perhaps collect information from clients or get feedback on something. Um, there's a variety of different ways you can use it. So today I'm going to create a form called Employee Satisfaction Survey. And here I need to put in a, just we're going to call it, um, uh, please, please complete. I have found that we need to put in a description here in order for it to show up in a different place that I'm going to show you in a minute. So here I have some questions. So we've got different kinds of questions. For this one, I'm going to choose rating. And the question is going to be on a scale of one to 10. How happy are you? I guess maybe I have to do that a little differently. There we go. How happy are you? Now, since I have a scale of one to 10, I've got to go down here and put 10. And then stars aren't going to work as well as a number. So here I have a scale from one to 10. Okay. And then I'm going to add another question here. And it's going to be, if you did not rate a 10, <laughs> how can we? Okay, so then I'm going to add another question. Okay, thank you. On a scale, okay, where's my next question? Okay, this needs to be required. As you can see, it has to be required because if people don't answer it, they won't get to the next question. So here, um, it gives me lots of options as to what kind of questions, but I actually don't want. So I'm going to use... Uh, text. And here my question is going to be, if you do not rate a 10, what can management do to make you happier? And here, probably not required, because if you did answer 10, you don't need to answer this question. But we may want people to put a long answer. So I'm going to click long answer here so that people have the chance to write all the things that we can do to make them happier. So then here with the forms, I'm going to share this form in a post um, back in my Teams. So here we go. I'm going to go into Smart Orca's All Discussion, and I'm going to start a new conversation, and I'm going to share that. So I'm going to go back in here and say share and get that link. So then I have a link here that I can copy, and I can put it back over here in my conversation. And so here I can go, um, here is a new survey. So actually what I want to do is I want to maybe edit this and make it into a little bit more um, prominent. So I'll say new survey. And then I would like people to please complete this week. And then the link is it right in here and I can click. Now I did edit it, so I'm going to click the check mark to say, yes, I'm happy with the edit. And I'm going to send that off to people in the team to complete. So what I wanted to show you quickly is that see here, it says fill, and then there's a pipe, and then we have employee satisfaction survey. What I discovered is that if I did not put 
a little description in here, that title wouldn't show up. So just a little tip to know if you plan to be using one of these surveys. Okay, do we have any questions yet, Alan? Everybody's pretty quickly. pretty quiet right now. Right. Yeah, well, we're moving pretty quickly through this through this material. So, if you're um, if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, <laughs> that's because it is a lot of material to to absorb in uh, in less than an hour. Any rate, so I'm going to go back into the health and safety team again, and I'm going to. Uh, but I'm first I'm going to do that from SharePoint. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go get rid of some of these. I want to go into SharePoint because I want to create a list, um, but I want to create the list first. So we're going to look at SharePoint in a minute. In the meantime, I want to go into the health and safety. And here we have new. So this is where we can create all kinds of new things in our SharePoint. And this is where we would create a list. So I'm going to create a list in the health and safety and I'm gonna create a blank list. So here, this will be called emergency contacts. And I think it's fairly self-explanatory. I don't need to put that in, but I will show it in the site navigation. So I'm gonna go create. And so when I show it in this, in this navigation, you can see it shows up right here. So we want it to be prominent because it's something that we want people to see right away. So we can see we have a title column and then we have an additional column. And so here we're going to add a column, a single line of text, because perhaps we want to put a phone number of what the emergency contact would be. So I don't think I need to put a description and a single line of text should be fine. There's no need for a calculated value because it's not a number and I'm going to save. So that will add, that's pretty much all I need for this particular list but I'm going to add a new item. And so here you can see I'm going to go, what will I put here? Medical emergency and a phone number. So here we'll go 911 and save. And so that we have beginning of our emergency contact list. So that's um, in our SharePoint site, but we will be able to see it in other places as well. But you, this is where you would typically go to see it. So now we're going to take a look at actual SharePoint. And you will see here, all of these tiles are the exact same tiles as we have represented in our team. So when we went over here, we have three teams that I'm belonging to and there's some hidden teams down here. And that's reflected in our, how to get this list to go away, in our SharePoint. So here we have them. So once again, I'm gonna go into the health and safety and show you the main page. So this is the, that channel, the health and safety, sorry, that team, the health and safety team, this is their SharePoint site. So you can add a news feed if you like, you can add quick links, this activity feed is actually generated by the activity in your SharePoint site and in your team. So you won't be able to change this unless you just wanna remove it altogether. But over here you have your documents. So here I'm going to click on documents and you will see in the health and safety, these channels are the exact same channels as we have in the team. And so where we click files in the team the files that are in those section, that section of files, these are the files there. So this is a way of looking at those files in the SharePoint and in Teams. But here's the thing that is really interesting here is that this sync button is the secret to getting those files into your file explorer. So we looked at file explorer a few minutes ago because a lot of people are pretty familiar with opening their documents from that particular launch pad. And so this is the sync. Now this, if you use this sync, you will sync all of these documents. But if you go back to the folders, you can also sync the folders, right? So if you click the sync here, you're going to get all of these folders synced into your file explorer. You can also share a folder or you can share a document from here. 
there's lots of things you can do with this particular interface. I'm just going to go back to home and Okay, I just want to mention one thing real quick here. But I think this is one of those sort of aha moments for a lot of people, especially if, if you're new to Office 365 or maybe you've just used Office 365 on kind of a limited basis for just email or something like that. But the question always comes up, what's the difference between SharePoint and Teams? And really, you know, you've answered it. Is that it's just a different way of looking at the same stuff. It's the same data in, in most cases. Um, but it's presented in a different way and it's just, you know, organized slightly differently, but it is really the same stuff. It's not like you're launching into a, a completely separate universe. So I think it's a really key foundational point for people to, to understand. Yes, you know, um, one of the things that I have come to realize, Alan, is that Teams is really just an interface. It's really just a, a kind of a layer in between your SharePoint files and all these different great apps. And you know, SharePoint is a gateway, Teams is a gateway, but it's all the same information in the grand scheme of things. Yep. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show you, we hadn't quite finished with lists. I'm hoping that this is gonna work. Um, it should actually show the list that we created, but it seems to take about five minutes. And I think we haven't had five minutes yet. So we do have an emergency contacts list over here in the SharePoint environment. And if we click the lists, and of course over here you can see, if we go to the launch app, lists is there too. I've just saved it as a favorite. That list will in fact show up here. So once again, like Alan was just pointing out, we have a variety of different ways to see the same information. So yeah, I'm sorry it hasn't shown up yet. I know. Uh, when I was practicing this the other day, not only did it take quite a while for it to show up, but then when I decided to delete the list and start over again, it took a long time for it to actually disappear from this interface. So this is one of those, I guess it's compiling in a different way in the background and it's not quite as instant as uh, we were hoping. Those electrons aren't moving fast enough today, Kate, exactly. that's all. It's, they're they're yeah. going uphill or something. They're on their way to Timbuktu and back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, um, that is the, the array of Microsoft tools that I have to show you. Um, in the, uh, the only thing that I think maybe in this particular environment where I'm is like showing you how to build pages. So for example, here, not only can you build a list, you can start a new document library. So right now there's one document library, that's this one here with folders in it, but you can actually start a whole new area for documents, which would be called another document library. And so you can see, you can, you can create pages, news posts, and so on. So there's lots and lots of options here in the SharePoint interface for you to play with and make work for your team. So quick, Kate, a quick question here. Um, I think people are curious about when you create a tab in Teams, and you put a form or whatever it is on that tab, are you, are you creating a new copy of that form or are you simply referencing the original form that you created? And no matter where you update it, you're always updating the same form. I'm thinking that form, now that form was the survey, right? That was the form that we, we sent that survey. Um, that form is anywhere you look at it, it's going to be the same. Right. It's, it's um, again, it's one of those things where it's um, just going to see if I go back to forms here. Anywhere you see that form, it's going to be the same form. It's going to be the same information. It's not going to create a new form when you, um, except unless you, you fill it out and complete it and then somebody else fills it out. Again, it's like a survey. So you're going to get an, any number of forms filled out and then responses to that form. Yep. Does that answer the question? I think so, yeah. So question here about legacy applications and specifically about Microsoft Access. So you mentioned that it seemed like Access maybe is on its way out. There's lots of Access applications out there. You know, our, our clients, um, you know, frequently have an Access database or two doing very specific tasks. Usually they're homegrown. Um, any idea what the future holds there and what sort of the I time don't. window is? Yeah, I have mm -hmm. not done that research. I'm afraid yep. I can't tell you what it is. It's called a legacy app because it's been around for a very long time. 
it was an independent app and now it's been brought into the fold. And I just have a feeling that, um, you know, Microsoft's got plans for it. Probably do some research on Microsoft. <laughs> yep. yep. My it's a very useful <laughs> program, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah. Um, you know, Microsoft has a history of kind of, you know, very slow, gradual endings of their products, sometimes yes. maybe a little bit too slow. <laughs> um, <laughs> they have a hard time killing them off. So I, I don't I suspect that Access is going away anytime in the near, near future. And I know I haven't, um, I have not heard of what's next out there. Uh, and then it's sort of a similar question here about, about Skype, but being, is, is that a legacy app? And I think uh, you mentioned that S Skype is a legacy app. Is that true? Yes, it's considered a legacy app, and I believe Skype will go away. Yeah, I mean, really, um, Microsoft acquired it, and then they created Teams, or they did yeah. it kind of all at the same time. And I think that they acquired it so they could effect effectively, you know. Then they created Skype for business, but then Teams has become a much more integral, useful program. I mean, Teams has really evolved over the last few years. It was not as as in, in, integral as it is now. It wasn't as complete, wasn't as um, robust as it is now. It's, it's got a lot to offer now. And there was a time when we really didn't know exactly what Teams is all about. And I think those were the days when they acquired Skype. And so I think Skype is eventually going to go away. But in the meantime, they're still offering Skype for business. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because I'm not really sure why they're still offering it other than they've got a user base out there to support. But yeah, yeah there's nothing like a good pandemic to spur the uh, <laughs> development of collaboration tools for people scattered about. Um, but I think you're right. You know, Teams has really become kind of the focal point, uh, even more so than, than SharePoint. It's really the communication uh, standard, I think, these days. Um, you know, and, and the ability to incorporate so many of these other bits and pieces just makes it kind of a hub. Um, you know, we're using Zoom right now for our webinar only because Zoom ha happens to have a better webinar feature. If Teams yes. had a, a, a webinar feature as good as Zoom, we would use that. And I'm sure that that day is coming. I, I don't think I'd want to be Zoom these days. Um, I think Microsoft has is, is, is really got the, the, the product to beat. Um, yeah, so... So interesting to see where, where it all goes. But, you know, I know that in some cases people are relying on teams to replace phone systems. I can tell you that when we're remote, it's rare that we pick up the phone anymore. Oh, it's, you know, we're just doing yeah. teams chats, video chats, video meetings, yeah. all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, and it was, you know, it's been designed as an internal collaboration tool. So I think that that external stuff is, is coming. I, I agree with you though. I think it's coming and I think there's going to be at least as much functionality in an, an expanded teams as there is in Zoom and possibly more. Yeah, so you talked a little bit about Edge and I have to confess that I, I um, you know, I'm more of a Google Chrome kind of guy and I, you know, every time Edge pops up, yeah. I, you know, minimize it and go on to Chrome, but it sounds so to me like I should, I should really kind of experiment. Is that, you know, I you're, you're uh, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. It was almost like it became Chrome overnight. Like I had all my favorites saved in Chrome and overnight Edge became a different interface. And I, like I say, I, I have a feeling they just gave up and decided to go with the Chromium technology. But again, for the launch pad feature, for the collections feature, um, the editor is great. I mean, I don't use the editor all that much, but I think the collections feature is one of the things that I really love. Now I can show you one other thing that's very, very cool. And this will be a little bit revealing for me. And again, it's up in the right hand corner. So if you've got videos covering this, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm going to try and show you or explain at any rate. So I have a demo interface here called Smart Orcas. And that's the interface I'm using right now. And you can see that I have these favorites all set up along the top. But then I have my personal. Okay, so I have a personal address. And when I change over, to my personal profile. Well, it looks like it's not gonna do it right now. I wonder if that's because I'm sharing. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna open up another one. Let's see if I can open up another one. There we go, I've got another one open here. This is my Smart Dolphin Smart Poplar. This is my interface. So you can see it's got a whole different set of favorites up at the top. And that's one of three. So then I've got, um, the smart orca. So this is the one that I just showed you a minute ago, right? So it's got different favorites. It'll have different collections. 
it'll have different features on it. Each profile is like a separate browser, but you can just switch back and forth. And here's the other thing, what I've discovered is that in the old days, if I wanted to demo two different things and I needed to have them both open, I had to use an incognito tab in order to kind of disguise the fact that I was logged into one place and not into the other. You can do it with these profiles. So this is, I think this is an extremely powerful um, way of, of organizing a, a, a browser where you can actually have a different sets of favorites and different things going on and you can just switch back and forth from one profile to another. So another question here, Kate, um, I know you just briefly touched on the bookings application and you weren't really, you know, intending to get in, into that today. Is there any, I mean, can you, if people are interested in bookings, um, which is, I mean, we're familiar with Calendly. We actually have a, a, something that, that we use internally for scheduling service techs was something very specific to us. But the idea of being able to, you know, sort of self-schedule a calendar right. appointment with somebody, I think is a really powerful, interesting um, function that, you know, many yeah. people might not be aware of. Is, is there, mm -hmm. um, can you point us in a direction to maybe get started with something like that? I'm just looking at it now. I'm thinking that maybe it's an add-in. Yeah. I don't see it on the, the list. And so let's just experiment with it right now. Um, where is the search? Oh, here we go, search for apps. So bookings. I mean, I have colleagues that use bookings. So room bookings, doesn't say bookings per se. So, okay. I, so you have to do a little more research on that one. If people are interested, uh, we will find the answer to that question yes, for you. You can yeah. certainly just reach out to us. Um, you know, and I think the idea of these add-ins, especially in teams, is, is also sort of a new concept to people, probably something we'll talk a little bit more about in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the September uh, session. But the, the idea that, you know, a whole bunch of companies other than Microsoft also make these add-ins that you can add to your tabs and, you know, it does, it, everything doesn't have to be a Microsoft world and, <clears throat> and it's very, very powerful. And as you clicked on the, the plus sign to add a tab, you know, you, you, you saw some of those. You can see um, some that, of them. Yeah, yes. you, right. Yeah, so if you click yeah, there amazing array it just goes on and on and on and you know, I, know. Yep. I actually had a, in a meeting with one of our clients the other day and they've brought in a third party app that they use in their business and so they could go out to that program and use it or they can have it embedded in teams and anything that they fill in in teams it just shows up in the other app so it's it's truly bringing their work into teams so that they don't actually have to go outside teams that's yep. it. You're right. I mean, it's just, it goes on and on. It's, it's a huge array of. I think where people are with teams these days is that they, you know, they were kind of, a lot of people were, were sort of forced into using it and they got pretty good with the basics. And, mm -hmm. you know, now it's time to, to really explore a little yes. bit more than that. Um, and, you know, I, I was interested in stream. I have to admit, I'm not really very familiar with stream as a video, you know, hosting platform. Is there in, in your opinion, or do you have any have an opinion in terms of why you might use that instead of just YouTube or you know something like that? Well, for example, if you're recording your meetings, so if you set up a meeting in Teams and you record that meeting, you can upload that recording to the channel, and so mm -hmm. you can keep a, an ongoing stream of stream, sorry, <laughs> a stream of those meetings in your channel at um, you know all the way through so somebody that's joining the channel and wants to see what happened in the past they can go back and look at those meetings i've also noticed um, in our company our ceo does a, a what we call a, a sort of a an, an employee in-person cast like a, a weekly cast and uh, they post those to the channel so that you can watch them from you know like you can look back and see what what happened on that weekly cast. So I think that there are a variety of ways. I mean, even internal training, you could do trainings, you can do, like I said, uh, the neat thing is you can do a screen capture of you know, how to use a program, how to use this, how to use that. You can capture that in stream and then you can post that within your company. Yep, yep. And so another question here about uh, tabs. And so for example, um, the example here is that, you know, something like a whiteboard, you know, that's clearly going to have probably going to have a beginning and an end life to it. You know, you're going to brainstorm on something. Yes. You know, it may not need to live as a tab forever. I mean, so right. how does that really work? Do you just delete the tab when you're done with it. Can you, you archive it? You can just delete it. You, you, you could just delete it. You can just delete it. Yeah. Now I'm in the actual whiteboard app, 
But okay. similarly, um, in your Teams environment, you could just go in and delete that as well. Right? So if you deleted it as a Teams tab, does that delete the whiteboard or is that still saved in the whiteboard app? I, that's a very good question. It says remove. I have a feeling it might remove it forever. Yeah. So as far as, um, as, as saving it, like, let's just see if there's a, it's, it's you can export it. So, but it, of, of course it exports as an image, right? Because it, it always lives as an image. So if you wanted to save it, you could export it as an image. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of whiteboard stuff, people probably don't necessarily need to save. But well, if you true do, enough, right? It's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, uh, uh, what do they call it? A sandbox mm -hmm. for throwing around some ideas and figuring out what, what you want to do to formalize a process, for example. Right. All right. Well, I think that's the end of our questions. Unless anybody has anything else or Kate, unless you have anything you want to add. Well, I just was uh, looking at the comment. Uh, Edge is great. Never really liked Explorer in the past. I can appreciate that. <laughs> We're stuck with it, though. Yeah. And then we all used Chrome for a long time. And we all but... use Chrome because we all feel the same way yeah. about Explorer. Yeah, but, um, exactly. Yeah. And then we're, we're just suspicious of what Microsoft puts out there. So that's probably why we haven't used Edge until Kate now tells us we should use Edge. So I'm, I'm going to try I it. I know. I, you know, it's funny because when you're kind of invested in Microsoft technology, um, you're, you're, you're just hostage to it, right? No matter what they do, it's like, oh, well, that's Microsoft. And so one of the things that I often say in these trainings is, you know, the one thing you can count on with Microsoft is that things will change. They just like to change things. And sometimes they change them in ways that are subtle and easy and very intuitive. And other times they just change the whole program name, like Office 365 became Microsoft 365. And it's like, what, what did that mean? So I think you can just count on things changing, but usually I would say for the better. I know that Microsoft has the, the user experience, um, um, the uh, optimization of the user experience at heart. And so I think you can count on good things from Microsoft, but we do get frustrated at the side as well. <laughs> well, it's usually that they make changes as soon as we're actually, we've learned the, you know, the, exactly. the status quo and then something as as changes. And, yeah, exactly. yeah, so, yeah. Um, all right. So I think we may be ready to kind of move on here, Kate. I know we have another slide or two just to sort of give yes, people- Yes, we wanted a, to just uh, do one last quick slide here. Yep. So Question, obviously- And then your next slide, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. And, you know, the vast majority of folks on this call today are, are uh, clients of ours. So you don't need an invitation. You know, we'll consult with you for however long, you know, you want us to consult <laughs> with you. Um, there are some guests on the call. So if you you know, if you're not a client, absolutely feel free to reach out. We're happy to spend some time with you talking about Office 365 or or whatever else is on your mind as, as it pertains to IT. Um, and as I mentioned at the top of the call, we will be sending out a survey along with um, a recording of this session. And we're looking for feedback for up, upcoming sessions. So, um, you know, please feel free to, to share those with us. And, and we thank you guys for being here today. And I think we'll, we'll wrap it now. Yes, thanks so much. I really enjoyed this today. Thanks, everybody. See you.